A very good morning to you. Welcome to your world. My name is Olive Burrows, in case we haven't been introduced. And I'm sitting in for Winnie Alubembe this morning. And this morning we discuss taxes. They say two things in life that you cannot escape, death and taxes. And I'm joined by a lovely lady in studio this morning, Hakamba Wangwe, Chief Manager, the Tax Invoice Management System, TIMS. Perhaps, uh, Karim Busana Hakamba, is this your first time, first of all, on uh, NTV? Yes, my first time on, on NTV, and uh, thank you. Oh, oh. We're happy to have you. Uh, you're here on a mission to create public awareness on TIMS, TIMS, the Tax Invoice Management System. So, what is it? So, when you're talking about the Tax Invoice Management System, uh, first of all, tax, uh, as you said, something that is inevitable. All of us know about tax. When you're talking about invoices, you're talking about really transactions, your sales, and of course management system, you're talking about systems. So uh, what we are trying to do is uh, to try to automate the way we are doing uh, uh, our business, mm -hmm. starting from the traders, that is the VAT registered taxpayers, to KRA, to make sure that we have a kind of integration so that as you do your transactions at your business premises, you are issuing receipts. Now what we are asking as KRA, can we have those receipts uh, transmitted to KRA uh, through the internet? So we really are taking advantage of technology to advance ourselves from the level that we started. We started this journey, by the way, in 205. Uh, where when we introduced the really the electronic tax registers mm -hmm. and now uh, at that point we only had made provision for invoices being generated through these systems and now we are going to the next step where instead of ge just generating and issuing and then we ask you okay now upload them into the system what we want is for them to be transmitted on real time on your real time basis so that's th that's basically what it is the tax invoice management system so it's a seamless transfer of these invoices yes th that is correct um, uh, basically on on real time on your real time basis so okay. if you can be able to manage real time then you do real time if you have uh, challenges with internet connectivity you can do near real time Okay, yes. uh, so you're saying this is a development or an enhancement of what is already in place, which is the ETR, which is what we are familiar with. Yes, yes, it's, it's just an enhancement. We are just, uh, we know technology is advancing uh, uh, in this economy. There's so much that we are doing to digitize. And uh, with us, we, 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 th we felt we, we cannot be left behind. So as even we take advantage of technology, what is there in technology that can make our VAT administration better, then we are just enhancing that. And I'm sure over time, we'll still have more opportunities to be able to enhance to do tax better. OK. Yeah. All right. So um, we'd be told, usually we are told, make sure you get an ETR receipt. Why an ETR receipt? Yes, uh, why an ETR receipt? Uh, uh, Olive, you need to know that uh, we have a section of our taxpayers, we call them VAT registered taxpayers, mm -hmm. that are uh, mandated with the responsibility of collecting VAT on our behalf. Actually, when you go to the shop, any shop you go to, you go to a restaurant, whenever you are given that receipt, it is you who is paying the tax. Mm -hmm. So because it is you who is paying the tax and we have appointed agents or by you registering for VAT register, uh, as a VAT registered taxpayer, you, you are held responsible as an agent. What we are asking is for this tax to actually come to us. But for us to be sure that that tax will actually be remitted to KRA, the, the, the first signal for you as an end uh, consumer is you getting the ETR receipt then it, it shows that actually this person is accounting for the tax on behalf of KRA. But the next step really, even as we head into teams, is that once you get that receipt going forward, you know that, in the, that the tax that you have paid has actually been transmitted to KRA. The details of that tax has been transmitted to KRA. So that's why it's important that whenever you go to, to, to buy something from someone who is VAT registered, then it's good for you to get the ETR receipt. Okay. Now, that serves for the people who are end consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those people who are also, they themselves, buying from a VAT registered taxpayers, but they themselves are VAT registered. Mm -hmm. So they have an incentive of being able to claim import tax. Mm -hmm. So, but for you to be able to claim import tax, then you have to prove that you actually 
paid that tax in the first place. Mm. So that's why it's important for them also to have a valid uh, electronic tax uh, register, a receipt that has been generated from a, an ETR for them to be able to claim input tax and also to be able to claim refunds. Okay. Yes. So what will this involve? First of all, how many uh, VAT registered businesses uh, are we looking at? So uh, from our register, honestly, we are looking at over 200,000. Just a little over 200,000, we'd be looking at 240,000. But then uh, just a percentage of these are payment and credit filers. So they are active. Mm -hmm. there, uh, I would say a little less than 50%. Uh, the majority of them are nil and non-filers. Mm -hmm. So our focus right now is on the, the, the active taxpayers who are either filing credit returns or payment returns for purposes of just us making sure that we can account for those ones. So those ones are about half that, uh, that population, about 113,000 taxpayers who we are foca focusing on right now. Okay. Mm. So why is it that uh, the rest are nil and non-filers? Um, th that is actually part of the problem we are trying to address. Because once you register for VAT, we expect that as you come in, you'll be doing some, uh, some business. There's a business that you're purposing to do. You are, your turnover is above 5 million. Uh, mm -hmm. Our target is 5 million per an annual turnover. And so we expect that there's some business you are coming in to do. So immediately you, you, you register for VAT and you turn out to be a non-filer. Then that shows the problem we are actually trying to address. That because we do not have visibility of this population of the taxpayers, therefore there's some non-compliance. There's an aspect of self-suppression that someone is doing. Mm -hmm. That's why they pr probably they're filing nil, nil returns or not filing returns at all. So a part of us addressing that problem is implementing automated solutions. Teams is just one of them, by the way. We have other aspects of automation that we are doing to cover the, the, the gaps that we are having when it comes to VAT administration, to reduce the population that is of non and nil filers, to make sure that these taxpayers are visible, probably give us an opportunity also to clean our tax register as we are right now. Mm -hmm. Because by the time we complete this implementation, we'll be looking at the taxpayers who did not come on board at all and are non filers then can they justify being VAT registered taxpayers? Then we'd, we'd have to clean our register to ensure that we only have uh, the active taxpayers on board who are, who are actively transmitting invoices to carry. Okay, mm -hmm. so but why would somebody register as a VAT, uh, regi we call it the VAT registered taxpayer, and then not file returns? So uh, th there are two aspects of, of, of it. I'd like to give um, maybe some leeway to those who register in, in anticipation of some kind of business. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they, they'll just come on board and for a few months they'd probably be non-filers. Mm -hmm. But when you find someone who is a perpetual non-filer for three years going, then it means there's a problem. That person either had uh, uh, not, uh, not good intent in coming on board teams what happens with such people is that sometimes they are they are actually transacting uh, and and uh, in so you say chini amaji they are transacting but but because we cannot catch up with them they are actually issuing tax invoices as it is right now not uh, maybe not on teams because in teams we can be able to see them but uh, even you when you go to the shop you, they'll actually give you an ETR they just they are collecting your 16% not remitting it to KRA keeping it for themselves. Meanwhile, we call them missing traders, actually. We call them missing traders mm -hmm. because they are registered, but we just can't find them. Mm. So by implementing teams, we're actually trying to weed out those so that now anytime you transmit an invoice, we know where you are. We, we can be able to tell wh who you are or where you are. Okay. Yeah. So if your, business, if, you're a, if your business transacts more than five million, you said, yes. annually, has an annual turnover, yes. I beg your pardon, has an annual turnover of five million shillings, mm annually you're required it's a requirement yes to register to register okay. um, but we have also another category again of uh, VAT registered taxpayers by virtue of who they transact with mm -hmm. they don't meet the threshold of five million turnover per year but because that they, they are transacting with an entity who requires them to be VAT registered then they register so sometimes they don't meet the threshold but they come in for their voluntary uh, vat registered taxpayers so those ones are also in in, in that category of our hundred uh, our two two hundred and forty thousand taxpayers but it, it seems like such a small number no yes uh in fact when you're talking about teams sometimes there's an uproar 
that uh, we, we are targeting all businesses, Mama Mboga, Sasa, where will they get these devices from? But uh, it's a small uh, population of taxpayers because, again, uh, not many of our taxpayers meet that threshold. The other thing is that not all supplies are supposed to be VAT uh, for, the, for purposes of VAT, like uh, accounting for VAT. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, you'll find a doctor. A doctor is not VAT registered. Mm -hmm. They're exempt. Mm -hmm. So there are some supplies that are on, not subject to VAT, and that's why you'll find very many big businesses, but you'll find they are not VAT registered by virtue of what they do. Uh -huh. But if you've been categorized by the VAT Act uh, 2013 as, uh, as having supplies that are subject to VAT, then you're supposed to register if you meet the threshold. Okay. Yeah. So tell us, how does it work currently with the current ETR uh, receipt? You talked about uh, these merchants. Are they called merchants? Or merchants, yeah, merchants yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, being required to upload yes. uh, these receipts. Yeah. So w do, you have, do I have to go look for a scanner to upload it? Okay. Is it when everybody is told to file your annual tax returns? Yeah. How does it work? Currently. So, so we started from uh, in 205, uh, honestly. In fact, I want to just highlight our journey to you. In 205, when you implemented the ETRs, what, what used to happen is that you make your sales over the period of uh, one tax period. It's a month, basically. And then uh, filing process was basically manual. So when you're filing your return, you have to bring those invoices physically. Uh -huh. So you have big entities who used to bring boxes and boxes of invoices per month. And then our officers now had to go through those invoices to verify that this, what this person has submitted in, in these boxes is actually equivalent to what they've declared in their return. So in 2012, we, we, we came to this consideration, wait a minute, we could also work on improving this process so that we don't get all these papers being brought here. So we started ITAX. We started working on ITAX. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with ITAX, the provision that was made is that uh, the details of the invoice had been uh, detailed within the VAT return. So all you needed to do is that if you can maintain that data, now instead of bringing us the boxes in Excel format, now come end of month, those 60,000 uh, invoices that you have generated, now upload them. We've given you a functionality to upload them into the return and file your return. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, still not good. Um, why can't we have this information instead of maintaining the Excel? then we have this information transmitted then over time what we are looking at right now in the in the in the in the next few months is having an auto populated return so that now we are receiving the invoice data we are receiving from the ones who are already on board we need all vat registered taxpayers to come on board and then we activate what we call uh, the auto populated vat return where now we, it's just actually just picking from the data that is available to us so that now the taxpayer doesn't even need to upload that in information, but they can, they can now see it visible from our, our systems. I'd like to mention that return is already uh, on our portal. Mm -hmm. um, it's active for some aspects, not for, for team's purposes, because I mentioned that we are trying to address a VAT from different aspects, and those include also imports and exports. So for purposes of you accounting for your import VAT, the one that you are charged upon importing any of your supplies, mm -hmm. then that, that aspect is already ready and the return is available on the portal. But over time now, we just want to be satisfied that a uh, 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 sufficient amount of our population is on board teams so that we activate the, the VAT for domestic uh, supplies and that return will be complete. Okay, yes. so how many out of this 240,000 of, okay, so let's say the nil and non-filers, uh, removing them from the equation, we are left with about 130,000. Uh, how many are already onboarded? So, so th that one I'd, I'd need to explain. I would be counting about 46,000 mm -hmm. uh, with 20,000 actively onboarded. Uh, actively meaning that they, they, they've just moved everything to just make sure that we, we are done at this point. Mm. 26,000 are in the pipeline and mm -hmm. uh, are the ones we are expecting maybe in the next two weeks will be fully on board. So we can see they've started some processes somewhere, but they've not completed. Okay. Yes. So uh, when did this process start? Now, uh, for, for <laughs> the process starting, again, it's been a journey. It uh -huh. looks like it's, we just started the other day, like a few months. No, it's been five years. It's been five years of us uh, thinking about the legislation, thinking about the system we'd like to have in place, 
And uh, by 2019 is when we really started documenting the legislation, the VAT regulations for electronic tax invoice. So uh, in 2019 is when we started documenting, and by 2020 is when they were gazetted. Mm -hmm. So they were gazetted in September 2020, and they, they, they came into effect as law. Now, upon that gazettement is when now we had provided 12 months for taxpayers to be able to comply and uh, be able to transmit their invoices through the system. But then uh, towards the end of the last year, is when we realized that there's so much that is happening and with the COVID period, it, it, it did not help. And so we decided to give the taxpayers an additional 12 months, uh, starting effective 1st August 2021. Uh, that, that was lapsing in 30, on 31st July 2022. Since 31st July 2022, we found uh, there was a lot of, of la uh, lack of preparedness. So that there was a surge during that time. We suffered a bit because the devices were not enough to serve the demand that was mm -hmm. there. And so we extended again for two months. That is now coming to an end on 30th September uh, this month. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know Kenyans. Yes. They'll say whoever is importing these devices is just looking for business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is true. I mean, that, that's a fact. Of course, you cannot import uh, something. You cannot uh, come into an implementation without expecting something in return. Even for us as KRA, by us implementing this, we, need to, we are asking for enhancement of VAT compliance. There's always an objective that you, you want to achieve. But uh, that said, um, for the people who have been appointed to import these devices, these are people who we have taken through a vigorous vetting process to make sure that one, they can meet our specifications, and two, they can, they can bring devices that actually meet our specifications. So uh, for them, what happened again in July is that with the surge of demand, there was a lot that was happening on the ground. Um, uh, the economy wasn't doing very well. So that's why we had a lot of complaints about the cost of the devices. But we've had engagements with these suppliers about uh, um, just making sure that uh, we make it easier for them also to import these devices. We know part of the process of imp importation comes at, uh, at the port, care is also involved. So for any bottlenecks that they're exper experiencing upon importation, we tried to streamline it for them so that it makes it easier or cheaper for them to import these devices so that they don't pat pass on the cost to the, to the VAT registered taxpayers. So we've tried to put mechanisms in place to stabilize the prices. Yes, these people are in business, but um, being in business also, they're also ad addressing a, a, a challenge that we're experiencing when it comes to VAT administration. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. addressing a challenge. The, the point I was trying to make is yes. people are like, uh, perhaps Kiare wanakuwa tusumbua, wanatusumbua tu so that somebody can line um, their pockets. So you're saying there were challenges. There the, the were challenges, there were challenges, but uh, Kusumbua also comes with the challenge that we are experiencing. And for us, KRA, especially for this year, it's been hard on us for VAT purposes. Remembering that for most jurisdictions, whenever our economy has continued growing, mm -hmm. and as the economy continues to grow, for most jurisdictions, tax also grows. The, the ratio of tax to, to, for example, GDP also grows. But in this uh, economy of ours, Kenya, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. The economy is growing, but our ratio of tax to GDP is going down. So it means there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a problem that, um, however painful, you know, it's like when you, you are sick. Sometimes you are, you are very sick. And the only option the doctor has is uh, having a vaccination or an injection for you to get better. It, it, it's, it, it pains. It pinches. But then it's the path towards us addressing the, the challenges that we're having right now and improving our economic environment. Because if you're able to collect tax better, then it gets better for everyone. We are able to, to deploy more incentives to our taxpayers to be able to not feel the, the pinch of, of taxation so much because most of the loopholes are closed and everyone is paying their fair share of taxes. OK. Mm. So was there stakeholder engagement? Plenty, plenty. In fact, I can tell you like today we have four, like four. So plenty. We, we have had uh, uh, stakeholder engagement with the VAT registered taxpayers, what we call the business member organization. So any association that is representing a section of our taxpayers, the retail outlets, mm -hmm. the manufacturing sector, we have had uh, a lot of uh, stakeholder engagement running from 2019 when we were uh, documenting the legislation 
up to now, especially this year we've had countless uh, stakeholder engagement sessions. For those who may not have felt it, sometimes people don't feel, uh, how come they've not talked to me? It's because probably you're not VAT registered. And uh, sometimes when you're, you're not VAT registered, whenever we are calling, our team will, will normally just go down to our tax register and look at those ones who are VAT registered and send them communication for, for them to, be, to, to attend some of these sessions, either virtually or physically. So if you find that you don't have any communication to that effect, it's because you're not VAT registered. Okay. Yes. So how much, I'm curious, are these devices? You said uh, some, there were some complaints that perhaps the cost was prohibitive. Yeah. Um, so the cost of the devices depends on the technology that is also available at the business premises of these uh, traders. Mm -hmm. um, we have the taxpayers who have, uh, they basically are manual. Mm -hmm. They don't have any software billing systems, for example, to go by. If you go to a restaurant, sometimes they would have what we'd call the point of sale system mm -hmm. or a supermarket uh, or an ERP system. So why I'm highlighting on this is because um, the cost varies depending on what systems you have in place at, mm -hmm. your, at your premises. If, for example, you have just a basic ETR that you need to replace, then the, the cost would be like 45000 Mm -hmm. But then if you have like a point of sale system that you need to, to have enabled to be able to transmit invoices, then the cost is between 60 to 80,000. And then if you have an ERP system and uh, if you have an ERP system that needs to be enabled to transmit invoices, then the cost is coming from 80 to 120,000. So uh, what happens is that uh, for those who have ERP systems and mm -hmm. uh, you, well, they would agree with me is that if you have uh, numerous of them, because of the kind of technology they have, they probably do not have to have like a device for each ERP system that they have. Mm -hmm. There's a way that they're actually tying them in so that you bring down the cost by half or, or even a third. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But since KRA is the one which wants me to, to switch to this new technology, mm -hmm. can't KRA eat the cost from my taxes? Yes, you know, sometimes uh, well, it, it comes from a previous history. And when we rolled out uh, ETR in 2005, mm -hmm. it wasn't actually care, it was the government. Mm -hmm. uh, government uh, coming from our central government that they, they felt uh, we can't take this cost. But then coming to this implementation, what happened is that um, we were not able to get that, uh, that uh, incentive. And so just having a balance between us getting stuck with uh, VAT and compliance to a point where now we need to activate this. We had to go through, but uh, without the incentive. The only thing that was available now to the VAT registered taxpayers is time. Time to be able to make the necessary adjustments uh, and plan better so that they can be able to come on board. Okay, mm -hmm. which is why you kept extending yes. um, the deadline. Now the deadline is uh, 30th of September. Yes, so you said the, this is grounded on regulations that were gazetted yes. in 2020. Yes. So, okay, so before we get into the, the consequences of non-compliance, <laughs> because I'm assuming uh, <laughs> it, it's not voluntary. It, it, it's not voluntary, but there's a law in place. Uh, you know, uh, th uh, that's the thing about law, because sometimes you wouldn't volunteer to do some things until there's a law mm -hmm. in place. So the law is, is, is meant to help us do things better. And uh, the law came in effect, I said, uh, w of course, we had, we've always had the VAT Act. Mm -hmm. The VAT Act has always uh, specified that the commissioner can prescribe the manner in which uh, the commissioner wants, our commissioner is a lady now, but <laughs> the commissioner wants the uh, tax invoices transmitted to KRA. So now uh, tax invoices returns any document that needs to be transmitted, the commissioner has leeway to prescribe how they want them to reach here. So in 2015, the commissioner said, all returns must be automated, must be transmitted to KRA. And it came to pass, all of us file our returns through ITAX. Mm -hmm. So now the commissioner is saying, any tax invoice generated, I need it transmitted to carry. So that's where we are heading to. The regulations are only meant to explain how. How do we do this? What do you need to have in place? So that's what the regulations were coming in to do. Okay. Yes. All right. So what do I risk if, if, I, if I tell you that's your problem? So now, 
<laughs> so now it can't be my problem. There, there are two aspects of it. Now we start from the law and we start, we also talk about your administrative processes. So from the law, uh, the VAT electronic tax invoice regulations, at the end, after we've told you how to do it, we have also told you that if you don't do it, then there's the VAT uh, section 65, 63 uh, from the VAT Act mm -hmm. that we have the general penalty that you will either be fined a fine of not more than one million so it's one million or less mm -hmm. or a maximum of three years imprisonment or both mm -hmm. meaning that um, uh, from what we normally have as the provisions for the general penalty anything that is not outlined expressly in the act like for example we have the fines for for late, late filing of returns for for withholding the payment but then anything that is not outright, outlay, outrightly outlined, then we have the general penalty coming into force, and it's really emphasized in the VAT regulations for the electronic tax invoice. All right. Yeah. So is there specialized training? Because some of us, like you said, some people are still manual, right, mm -hmm. even now. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of us who are technologically challenged, who are still using notebooks as opposed <laughs> to laptops and iPads, mm -hmm. um, ha has there been training? For, for the taxpayers? Yes. So, so no, apart from the sensitizations, what, what we do is, uh, just like any other electronic devices that you buy, when you go to the shop and you need to buy like uh, this camera, of course they have to show you, this is where you click, this is what you do. So the ETR uh, suppliers have been mandated to make sure that by the time they're integrating or configuring your devices, they have shown you how to use it. And most of the VAT registered taxpayers had been using the old system. So it's not so different. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that now they know that once you punch in that receipt, it's being transmitted. That's the only difference. So for those ones who are coming in as newly registered taxpayers, of course, they have to be taken through that training. And it's being done by the vendors, who, the appointed vendors who have been approved by KRA. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm told since we also have to pay taxes as a company, we need to take a break, uh, a commercial <laughs> <laughs> break. But we'll be back discussing the tax invoice management system with Hakamba Wangwe, Chief Manager of TIMS. Tims, uh, you know what? If you have questions, my Twitter handle is at Oburrows at NTV Kenya, it'll also get to us. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to take your call. So if you have questions for Ms. Hakamba, I mean, representing the taxman is not an easy <laughs> job. Do reach out. Nevada Garden City, a residential development within Garden City offering stunning one, two, and three bedroom apartments, unique amenities, and an urban green convenient living. Call us today on 0722-123-000. Mivida, my home, my life. All the way from Kingston, Jamaica to 254 Nairobi City. Now I'm asking for a jam down Mazi Toilet and again, no Masana Kozia San, the Bakasa Sita, all over your screens. DJ Mo, she's Kapienga, MC Jawochi, we are the most spies. Let's talk more music. Man was made to serve Get an unsecured loan of up to 2.5 million shillings within 24 hours. Allow us to fully finance your water project, piping, solar installation, distribution, and your short-term working capital. Visit any family bank branch for more information.
jina langu ni Biri the vocalist na kupata wimbo huu kama sikiza tune yako ni jambo rahisi sana bonyeza star 812 star 802 hash na Mungu atawabariki skiza na nation supporting local talent ya uongozi ni kubwa mno ni ule ambao nasema upuzi wa kisiasa sika bana wangu nilisema niliibiwa kura kuna wale wanaoibeba barabara nani angefikiri kwamba uhuru wangeungana na ruto kuna watu huko mabroka huko nje makateli lakini kuna wale ambao mzigo kwa hakika unawalemea kabisa ni mtu wa mtatu oh kenya waulize maswali mengine kila siku ya jumatatu jioni tunawaweka kigodani viongozi wako hapo tuko tofauti hapo tuko jipe kati ya alama 10 swali hili ni swali la utata sana watu wanaangua kwa sababu ya maswali na mwisho wa kuisha basi lengo na shabaha ni kuhakikisha tunashajiisha uwazi na uwajibikaji katika safu zote za uongozi huko nchini Welcome back to your world. We are discussing taxes this morning with Hakamba Wangwe, Chief Manager, KRA Tax Invoice Management System. So I was wondering, so if we have to transition by September um, the 30th, and you know us Kenyans tend to be last minute people, uh, if I need to rush out and get my device, where am I rushing to? Okay, first of all, I think we need to now start, uh, start stopping being Kenyans because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've improved in so many aspects. I think this is one of the aspects that we need to improve and stop being last minute. But then uh, we have the list of uh, the approved DTR suppliers on the KRA website. Mm -hmm. We keep updating it. What we normally tell our taxpayers is that keep checking for the latest list and that one you can only find from the KRA website. Mm -hmm. So like in, in, in the last two weeks there were 16, now they're 17. Mm -hmm. So we always keep improving. We have more models, we have more suppliers on board and we'll always keep updating it. So if you need to, to get where you need to go, then you need to go to the KRA website. But then now, when, once you get to the KRA website, some of our taxpayers are far flung, mm -hmm. that they are not within Nairobi or Mombasa or maybe Eldoret, Nakuru. And you'll find some of these suppliers have centers in the main towns. Please contact them still, those 17, mm -hmm. because they have more agents countrywide so that they can be able to advise you on which one your closest agent is. So don't give up because you can see that the addresses are off for Nairobi because they have agents countrywide and you should be able to be facilitated through that network. Okay. Yeah. So you said the so the system is not all that different from what uh, they're currently using now. Yes, uh, for how you use it, mm -hmm. it's not it's not so different. Honestly, honestly, on the computing aspect of okay. it, the, the, the user interface, yeah, the user interface, mm -hmm. yes, the experience they'll get the same experience that they're having now. The only difference is that we introduced a component that is integrated within uh, within their computing aspect to be able to validate these tax invoices, even as they are generating them. Mm -hmm. They won't even notice, uh, they shouldn't have to, to check, so has it finished validating? No. Mm -hmm. So they'll be validating these invoices and transmitting these invoices uh, to KRA. So that's the component that we have actually introduced. We call it a control unit, mm -hmm. and it's the component that is serving the various uh, trader systems. And th that component, actually, we've classified it, maybe I should mention at this point, into four categories. And uh, when our VAT registered taxpayers go to the ETR supplier, they'll be hearing language like, uh, is it a type A, type B, type C, type D? What our VAT registered taxpayer needs to know, whenever you hear the term type A, it means, are you using an ETR? Mm -hmm. So that if you're using an ETR, then they're looking for the ETR that has the component of transmission, and that component is called type A. Okay. For type B is uh, point of sale systems. If you have a point of sale system, they'll tell you, you, you need a type B. If you have an ERP system, they'll tell you, you need a type C. 
So uh, taxpayers need to know the, 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 that language to be able to make uh, wise decisions. Because sometimes we have taxpayers who actually go to, to buy the ETR devices. They know very well they have an ERP system, they end up with a type A. And then now they come back and tell us, but I didn't need a type A, I needed a type C. So that's the uh, kind of education that they need to, 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 when we are doing the stakeholder engagement, that's the kind of information we are passing to them. The fourth type is type D. It's really generic. It works for any of the three, type A, type B, type C. But once it's, it's connected to any of the systems, it cannot be moved to another type. It has to stay there, but it's generic. It can work for any. Okay. Yeah. All right. So do I need internet connection? Yes. If it's you going to be transmitting <coughs> real time. Yes, uh, yes, you need internet connection because for, for, for the transmission, the transmission is happening over the internet. And uh, the advantage we have as a country, that's why I'm saying Kenyans, we need to stop saying, but we are Kenyans. <laughs> We've done so well with internet uh, connectivity that even the most far-flung areas, and I come from one of those areas, is well connected with internet. You don't have to worry about communication. So if you're a VAT registered taxpayer from one of these areas, then you should be able to transmit your invoices to KRA. And even if you have in, in instances where sometimes the, uh, the internet is a bit shaky, you can still hold your invoices until such a time when you get connectivity within the day, then you transmit those invoices. So that's why we are calling it real-time and near real-time basis. For those ones who are in Nairobi, they are managing real-time very well because you have internet everywhere, you have Wi-Fi. But for those ones who are far-flung, uh, for most part, maybe if they don't have Wi-Fi, the provision that is available also is for you to use a SIM card mm -hmm. or to use uh, to use LAN, uh, the, 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 the wired network. Mm -hmm. But either way, th you always have options for you to be able to transmit invoices. If you can use a phone, you can use an ATR. Okay. Yes. Now tell me, what is the benefit uh, for, for throughout the chain? First for KRE, uh, for the suppliers, mm. uh, these merchants, these vendors, these mm. business people, and also for me, the end consumer. Okay. So for, for care, basically, I've, I've outlined earlier, we are trying to uh, uh, address serious problems that we are having with VAT administration. So when it comes to cell suppression, when it comes to the, we call it the missing trader phenomena, it's like something that is just hanging over us all, all the time. But once we, we are able to seal some of these loopholes that are leading to such occurrences, then we improve on VAT uh, compliance, once VAT compliance improves, then we are able to collect more revenue for the government within the same framework that we have. We don't have to increase our tax rate, for example, from 16% to 18% because we want to collect more. We just need to seal the loopholes. Probably we'd have to, to come to a consideration of we are collecting uh, so much and our citizens need a break. Then the government would say, then can we reduce this tax from 16% to 14% because you can see that with the ceiling of loopholes we are able to collect more or sufficient to be able to, to manage some of our, the things that we need to do. So for the government and KRA, that, that's what we'll be looking at. But jointly with the taxpayers, we'll be looking at uh, simplifying the tax processes such that uh, now when it comes to processing of refunds, because we have the data now coming in on real time or near real time basis. When we have the process of one, when someone applies for a refund, what takes a, us a bit of time sometimes is the verification process. I told you the boxes of invoices mm. sometimes we are brought for. And n now we don't need that because it, it's transmitted, it's validated. If it's in the system, then it's valid. Then it leaves us with the question of do we have the money to pay? Reduces that time for verification of, of, of refunds. But for a taxpayer now, on that side of the taxpayer, they get paid their VAT refund uh, earlier than, than we have been paying them. We don't hold their cash flow so much that it affects their business environment. Uh, we are rolling out the auto-populated return. This is for the benefit of the, re of the taxpayer still, that uh, they don't spend so much time. We, we ease the way we do th our business. We in improve on that index. But the taxpayer now has more time to be able to focus or concentrate on their business without uh, putting in so much resources in terms of, in terms of time and, and uh, the human aspect of it, just doing returns. And then also sealing these loopholes. We have our taxpayers now, we are in this building, the next building probably, you are all p p taxpayers, we call you taxpayers. You guys are paying your taxes, I know you are paying your taxes. Might have someone in the next building almost doing the same business maybe not paying their taxes. Maybe that's the non-filer. Mm. We can't see them. 
So you, you're paying your fair share of taxes as well as paying your rent if you need to pay rent. You are, you are doing all the off overheads. This person is just focusing on his business, maybe just paying rent and keep uh, paying rent from the VAT they are collecting mm. from us. So that visibility also flattens the, the uh, business environment to a, to a point where we are all um, paying our fair share of, of, of tax from, uh, for, for to the government. And uh, if you, you manage to do your business, then all of you are getting, basically, you, you, you're getting something out of the business you are doing instead of being so hard pressed because someone else is not paying their taxes. So for, for the taxpayer, basically for the VAT registered taxpayers, the way we are simplifying these processes is so that we also make it easier for them to do their business. When it comes to compliance and audit, we are not in your face all the time because now we have to come and sit in your premises for days on end. We can do some of this work from our office. By the time we have to come, if we have to come, then we are addressing other issues that are not related to the tax invoices. For the ETR suppliers, of course, they are, they are actually a stakeholder that is supporting this implementation, just getting this government to the next level of digitizing. But of course, we said that they're in business. We have said that. We know that, that they're in business, but they are playing a critical role when it comes to tax administration, and we, we always hold them accountable for that. Because once we implement this right, then we collect taxes better than they have played a role in this. For the end consumer, you having the confidence that the taxes that you're paying are being accounted for properly uh, to the government, that's one advantage that you, you, you have. Uh, we always say in KRA, kulipa ushuru ni kujitegemea. Always have that. We say it in KRA, but we all need to have that uh, in our mind that any time we are paying our fair share of taxes and the taxes are utilized for the purposes that they are intended to, then we have made a contribution and definitely should be proud of it. Okay. Yeah. So on the face of it, how different? Because remember, ballot papers had security features. Do <laughs> Do these new, how different do these new receipts look? Uh, I was hoping we don't <laughs> get there, but uh, anyway. Uh, yes, we, 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 the, the new receipts are a bit different. Uh, you'll see they do have security features. We also have uh, just a point of information if it's a concern. We have secured the, the invoice transmission tunnel so that, and uh, that's why it took us a bit of time from 2015 because that was, um, in fact, it's still coming up a lot with our stakeholders that mm -hmm. how, how sure am I that um, the invoice data that I'm transmitting will not be intercepted. In the age of technology, that is always a concern. That is always going to be a concern because now you, 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 you don't have that control of uh, just having your physical invoices now taking them to carry and then you know oh I handed them over to Hakamba so they should be fine so between me and Hakamba no one was in the middle but then now when it comes to transmission of invoices some are still wondering okay is that tunnel secure what if someone intercepts it so we have uh, deployed a mechanism where when the invoices are sitting in the device before uh, even in the process of transmission they're in, 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 in encrypted format mm. so that Anyone who even decides to intercept for one reason or the other, or just maybe even an employee taking off with that invoice data, it won't be of any use to him until it hits the KRA system. When it hits the KRA system is when now that data can actually be visible and you can be able to tell they're decrypted at KRA. So uh, we've tried to secure that tunnel to make sure that that process is secure. But then now to be able to, for you to be able to know that these invoices have actually been transmitted to KRA, we have a QR code mm -hmm. on the invoices that you can scan with your phone to confirm whether this invoice actually got, got transmitted or not. We also have a unique identifier that we, we have as the invoice number. We call it the control unit invoice number. So as a business, you might have your own sequence for which you want to use for um, generating your, the serializing your invoices. We let you have that. But then any time an invoice is being transmitted to carry it's stamped with an, uh, a, a unique serial, a serial na uh, invoice number and actually identifying the serial number of the device that uh, that invoice came from. Oh. For purposes of you, even anyone, all of us can be able to verify. From the portal, uh, when you go to our KRA uh, login page, you can see the invoice checker or control unit uh, serial number checker for the purposes of you being able to verify that has this gone or not. But uh, 
with that there's a rider because we talked about real time only a real time basis. Mm -hmm. You know, some people might walk into a shop, oh, we said real time. So you just <laughs> walk into a shop, it's immediately you get the receipt, you're scanning it. That person might be on near real time. Mm. So uh, we don't hold them, like we don't go back, this receipt has not gone. No, we need to know that that person might be on near real time and probably by the next day, it's when that invoice will have been transmitted uh, to carry. Because maybe possibly the internet connection is yes, forty yes, at the yes, moment. Yes, 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 and and he, he for the business uh, tr uh, person they're not going to focus on or uh, make sure the internet is on. We don't want the, to worry them about that. We want to make sure that the invoices are uh, transmitted either immediately or intermittently. But uh, bottom line, they need to be transmitted. We don't want them to worry so much that I don't have connectivity. So should I stop generating invoices? They need to continue working whenever they, the, there is no problem with the channel, then they can transmit those invoices. Okay, yes. so um, I'm curious, are we leading the, the charge in, in East Africa as far as this technology is concerned? No, <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. Uh, we needed to advance in technology. Some of our, East, uh, our neighbors went ahead of us. Tanzania went ahead of us, Rwanda, so much ahead of us. Now we are benchmarking with Rwanda. Uh, at some point, Rwanda used to benchmark with us, even on tax invoice management system, incidentally. They visited us and we had the idea. We just didn't move fast enough to, to implement this, but we don't want to complain so much. We are here and we are moving. We are benchmarking with Rwanda now, but, but we, we are moving and for that we are grateful. Okay. Mm. So did you, in terms of ensuring compliance currently, uh, you talked about uh, having people visit premises. Uh, why was that necessary? It still is necessary. <laughs> it still is because when you're talking about uh, uh, VAT administration, it's so transactional that uh, if we don't have a close eye, and that's why we need systems on it, then it means that uh, the aspects or the possibilities of non-compliance are so high so that's why we have revenue officers trained at various uh, levels. We have the compliance officers, we have the enforcement officers, we have police attached to KRA for purposes of making sure that we secure our revenue. So in the event any of our teams have to visit you, or the intelligence teams, it's because uh, we are trying to secure some revenue. Uh, we'd like to minimize that uh, with, uh, with automation and having more visibility from our end. But in the event that we need to take the next steps, of course, our teams are, 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 are organized in such a way that uh, we know which team needs to, to address a, a certain aspect of any issue. Okay. Yeah. So it's possible now, uh, for those who have not uh, migrated, let me mm. call it the migration, have not migrated <laughs> uh, to the, uh, the TIMS, the Tax Invoice Management System, uh, it's possible for somebody to generate a receipt and then not upload it or not submit it? For, for those who have not migrated. Yes. Yes, uh, you know we are in a transmission process, mm -hmm. uh, tra tra transition, sorry, not transmission. So we are in a transition process where we know part of our taxpayers are still using the old devices and part of our taxpayers are on board the new devices. Bottom line, anytime you are generating, uh, you are doing a sale, you need to account for it using an ETR and hopefully by the time we get to the deadline, all of us will have migrated into teams. We have another section of our taxpayers who have also mig migrated into teams. That's why I was breaking down the active and not active who have migrated into teams. Um, but they bought devices. We can see they have bought. We, have, we can see they're in the process of buying or integrating, but uh, they're just not using them. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I know most people might be feeling they're waiting for the deadline, but uh, we need to, to advise taxpayers that the regulations are in place and they must use their ETR. Okay, so if I experience uh, teething problems with my device, fine, they showed me in the store, but then now when I was left to my own devices, uh, I, I'm struggling a little bit. Is there a number I can call? Yes, um, we have numbers that we have, I think we have outlined on the KRA website, but then um, I need to say, state the numbers. No, now. you can tell us okay. what you refer. Okay. So, so from the, the list of approved suppliers, we have also outlined the numbers that you can be able to call in case you need any support. And from our KRA team, our call center should be able to, to connect you. Even if you call the KRA call center, should be able to connect you to the team for you to be able to get the assistance that you need. That said, when it comes to teething problems, it's not in the, the, the taxpayers need to be comfortable that uh, even KRA 
is experiencing teething problems. So teething problems are not in the domain of for anything that you are rolling out that is new. It's, uh, all of us will have that problem before we get a firm hold of it to streamline some processes to be able to operate better. So we have the KRA that is trying to sort out issues both administratively and uh, technically to make sure that this system works better. Mm -hmm. We have the ETR suppliers who are also trying to streamline their processes. And of course we have the taxpayers who we have to give it to them. They're doing their best to make sure that they work within the system better, but we need to work together so that once we address these issues going forward, we'll have a better experience, all of us, of this implementation. Okay. Yes. So currently it's, are we, uh, outside of TIMS, the, the, what we implemented in uh, 20, you know, you said in 2005, yeah. were we working on an honesty system? Uh, you know, for KRA, when you look at how we account for tax, it's always, on, uh, can we call it honesty system, but self-declaration, where we give it to you, like you tell us how much you, you, you made and just pay what you think. You, 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 what you said you, you, you made. So even from an, even when you're doing your individual return, we're asking you, just, just tell us. We are not telling you, uh, but we know you've done this. Of course, you are, your, empl your employer return is there, but we're asking you, do you have anything else you need to tell us? And we, we, we rely on you because we are all honest Kenyans to, <laughs> <laughs> to be able to tell us that. So our tax regime is on self-declaration self um, uh, principle. Uh, but then, in the event that what, what you are saying is a self-declaration self is not supported by information available to us, then we, we, we come to you and ask you, how come you told us you only had this, but we can see there's also this one. That's why we have the withholding, uh, withholding taxes regimes. That's why we have the, the systems in place to make sure that we, are, we have methods of checking each other to make sure that if you declare this, then if we see it on this side and it's, it's matching, then it's fine. If it's not matching, then we have a problem. Okay. Yeah. So when uh, with the old ETR, right now for the upgraded, right? Do you call it the old one? Yeah, the <laughs> now old that one, yeah. we are upgrading, yeah. um, with the old one, uh, I would generate uh, a receipt, and then I would be required to upload it. You said yes. Using the same device? Y um, not no, uh -huh. not really. Onto Excel. Uh, uh, to uh, you, you actually maintaining. You know, it's partial, uh, partially manual mm -hmm. that you're generating receipts, keeping these receipts. Now you have a pile of receipts, mm -hmm. and then on your computer you have Excel, for example. Mm -hmm. There are some who have found a way of directly, especially if you have the software billing system, directly creating a, a, a table where you have those details populated. Come the end of month, you just upload it mm -hmm. into the into the return. But for those ones who had the handheld uh, ETR. They actually had practically to do it manually, that you have the list of receipts, now take them, now start feeding them into Excel, maintain that Excel. When you're filing your return, upload it into the return and send it to carry. Uh -huh. So we are trying to break that, to, redu to remove that, so that they just, if, if they're being transmitted, then you don't have to do that. Okay, yeah. so where you suspect suspicious activity, yeah. and you send out your teams, they would go to verify, mm -hmm. counter check what you've, up, what you've uploaded uh, via Excel mm -hmm. to the hard copies. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, what what triggers that is that sometimes what you've uploaded into the returns uh, uh, is not uh, is not matching with what someone else maybe may have claimed input tax on. You sold to someone who is VAT registered, and you did not upload it as a sale. You know you are counting for the sales into the return. But this person comes and says, but I'm claiming input tax from from Olive. But then we look at Olive's return, but we cannot see this cell in Olive's return. So can we ask Olive what's what's going on? Otherwise, we will not allow this one to claim import tax. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm told we have uh, <laughs> we have about 40 seconds yeah. before we have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, any last words? For VAT registered taxpayers, we've run out of time again. Uh, please use at least the next two weeks so that we don't have this conversation at the end of the month asking for more time. Come on board so that we, we try to, to venture into the next phase of this implementation. But also thanking the taxpayers who've already come on board for being compliant and being true Kenyans. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Hakamba Wangwe, Chief Manager, mm. Tim's Tax mm. Invoice Management System at KRA. So you're telling us no further extension? No further extension for now. Okay. For now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning on Your World. My name is Olive Burris, sitting in for Winnie Lou Ben there. I will see you tomorrow morning on AM Live.